Hello everybody. In this video, I will be showing you about how you can build a wildlife protection website using ReactJS. So let's jump right in. Right here, as you can see, is a website. Uh, I have named it Earth. So it's basically just a wildlife protection website here. So we just go back to home. As you can see, there's this typewriter animation. That's the first thing we can see right here. So this is just created using some simple CSS keyframes. And here, even on the nav bar, you can see that whenever we um, hover over them, we have this underline effect. So that is also created using simple CSS. And here, when we hover over these cards about uh, certain animals, like for example, the first one's lion, the second one's peacock, and there's elephant and squirrel too. So when we hover over them, uh, they tend to get a little bigger. And yeah, so here we have a read more button. Uh, we have that for all of them. And there's an, again an animation. So here, if I hover over this, you can see the arrow just moves a bit to the right side. So that's the animation we have. And here, if I were to click on this, it takes me to this page where it gives me information about a line. So here the change is that the URL goes to slash read more hashtag lion. Uh, if I were to go back and click on peacock, it would take me to the page describing about a peacock. And here, as you can see, instead of hashtag lion, now it's hashtag peacock. Now, the same thing works for the elephant and squirrel. The next page is the contribute page. So if I click on this, here you can see we have some simple ways to save wildlife. And again, we have the same text that we had on the home page. There's an image of tigers and yeah, the first one save habitat, then give water and resort, resorting to eco-friendly products. So that's what we have here in a little article about that. Then we have our last tab, which is wildlife. So if I click on this, we have the same thing we had the, on the home page, these same cards, just more of them. So here you can see you now there's fox, raccoon, bear, and also wolf. So again, this works the same way. Like for example, if I click on raccoon, it takes me to the page of a raccoon. And yeah, now it's hashtag raccoon. So that's what happens here. And now all of this is created using React.js, some HTML and some simple CSS. All of the animations are really easy and I will be guiding you to how you can build this application. So the first thing we can do, we need to do is we need VS code, obviously. So if you don't have VS, you can just search up Visual Studio Code Download like so, and that'll just take some time to load. So just wait for that. And yeah, here you can see the first link is download Visual Studio Code. You can just click on that. And yeah, that'll take you to this page. So depending on whichever uh, operating system you use, you can click on any of these. So for example, I use Windows, so that's what I have. So yeah, you can just install it this way. Now for creating our actual React application, we will need to open our terminal. And yeah, we'll have to type npx create-react-app. And this website for me, I'm gonna name it Earth, but you guys can name it whatever you like. So yeah, Earth. And now this is gonna take some time to actually initialize and create the application. So we'll have to wait until then. And right now, uh, as you can see, I've used NPX. So that's actually a part of Node. So if you don't have Node.js, here you can just download it. Uh, Node.js download, just search up that. And yeah, we get to the second, you can see here, download Node.js is the first thing that pops up. And yeah, there's a Windows installer and a Mac OS. So depending on whichever your operating system is, you can select it again, mine's Windows, so that's what I have. So yeah, we'll just have to give this some time to actually install the application, so you'll have to wait for that. Now, right here, as you can see, um, the application has actually been created. And yeah, I've called it Earth, so if you just open that folder, you can see this node modules folder and a public folder and also a source folder. And then here we have a git ignore package log.json and package.json and also a readme.md. So right here, uh, as you can see, 
For starting the application, we actually need to change direction, I mean directory, to whatever you've named your project. So you can just type that in here. So I've named it Earth, so I'll just type that in. And now as you can see, we're in that Earth directory. So then here, if I want to actually start this application, I'll need to type in npm start. So that's what I'm going to do here. And uh, yeah, right here, in our source folder, we actually don't require this app.test.js, logo.svg, and setup.test.js. So I'm just going to quickly delete that here. There we go. Okay, it just got deleted right there. Now in app.js, I have deleted this logo.svg. So I'll need to remove it from here or else it will cause an error. So yeah, I'll just do that. And here I'm just going to clear this and I'm just going to put in an h1 and yeah, I'll just say earth. Yeah, save that. And now in app.css, I'm going to remove all of the styles and save that. Um, yeah, there we go. And now I'm just going to open up index.css. And here what I'm going to do is select everything and give it a margin of zero, padding zero, and box sizing border box. Yeah, nice. There we go. Now we can just close this. And the next thing I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to go over to index.html. And I'm going to remove all of these comments because they're just unnecessary. Uh, there we go. And also this one. And now the description, I'm going to change this to Oh, there we go. It's time It's time to save wildlife. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to change the title to Earth. Yeah, there we go. Just save that. Now we can close this. And um, this actually seems to be taking a longer time than usual. Uh, okay, so it looks like something's already running. That's this app right here. So yeah, I'm going to type in yes. So it's going to open on localhost call in 3001. So yeah, we just have to wait for this right here. Okay, so right here we can see that it's actually successfully compiled. And if we go here, you can see that H1 I made, uh, it's right here, so earth. Now, um, back in the index.html, I'm gonna go back here, yeah, here, and the logo, so the icon here, as you can see, I wanna change it to this, but right now it's just the React icon, so in order to change this, I'll have to go here and change this to a link it's actually the link of an icon from icons 8 yeah so i'm just gonna paste that in here save and uh here if we go back to that just wait for it to reload just give it a minute seems to be taking longer than usual actually yeah, as you can see, it has changed here to the um, earth icon that I actually wanted it to. So yeah, the top of it is actually starting to look like how we want it to. So right now what we're gonna do is actually develop the first component. So that is gonna be this header that you can see right here. So in order to develop a component, what I'm gonna do is in the source folder, I'm gonna add in a new folder called components. There we go. And inside this, I'm gonna create another folder called header. 
So this is actually going to house our header component. So I'm going to create a file called header.js and also a CSS file for our component called header.css. There we go. Now uh, we can actually close our index.html. We don't require that anymore. And uh, here I'm just going to type in uh, a handy little snippet. So RFCE. And yeah. So that's just a snippet for a React component. So that's what it does. And I'm just going to save this here. And I'm going to import dot slash header dot CSS2. And now that snippet that I just did, uh, it's actually from an extension called React ES7. I think it should pop up if we just search for that. Yeah, right there. Um, yeah, there we go. It's actually this exten extension. So you can just download this from uh, VS Code's ex extension store. To actually render the component, we need to uh, type in header here uh, in our app file, app.js. So if I type in header, uh, what I can do is actually just click control space and it gives me this auto import. Uh, so if I just click on that, it automatically imports it from our components folder, header the folder and header.js. So now if I save this here, Just give it some time to compile and go back. This earth will, uh, we actually removed that so it'll just disappear and header, which is actually from this component will actually be rendered here. So uh, we actually have a divider sort of thing in between here. So you can see this is just this horizontal line dividing the header and the rest of the contents of the body. So uh, in order to get that, what we need to do is just create a simple HR, give it a class name. And the class name I'm gonna give is going to be earth underscore underscore divider. There. And uh, we'll have to style this a bit because right now we go back here. Yeah, uh, it doesn't look too good. So here I'm just going to paste in a few styles. What I've actually done here is imported a font. And yeah, here I've just made the font family to the imported font. And this is the actual, these are the actual styles for the earth divider right here. Yeah, earth divider. That's here. So what I've done is margin bottom of 50 pixels and margin top of minus 19 and an overall margin of 30. We save that and go back. Um, we just refresh this. Okay, it doesn't seem to be coming here. That's interesting. So we just comment this uh, here and save it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so we don't actually need this. Yeah, we, I'm just gonna remove that right there. And yeah, we have it looking like how we want it to. So if I go back to header.js here, I'll just make a few changes. So this div, I'm gonna give it a class name of header because it is the header component. Now inside this, I'm going to create a div called header underscore underscore write. Yeah, there we go. And inside this div, the first thing I'm going to do is create an a tag with the class name of header underscore underscore text. Yeah. So the href of this will actually be to just forward slash, which is our home page. So I'm going to change this to home. And actually the website we have here, as you can see, whenever we route through the pages, it has no refresh. And this is actually because we use a technology called React Router. And we're not going to implement that yet in this application 
For now, we'll just leave it as A tags, but a little later on in the video, we're actually going to implement that. So for now, I'm gonna create another A tag. We need three of these. So the second one is gonna be contribute. And the third one is gonna be uh, wildlife. There we go. Now this obviously will go to slash contribute and this just slash wildlife. There we go. Now, if we save that, it's gonna look hideous. So just wait for it to load here. Yeah, that's done. Yeah, it, it doesn't look good. So obviously we'll have to style this a bit, but for now, we're just gonna go on with this and in the end, we're gonna style it all up and we're gonna have it looking good. Now, if I just go back to this, now, obviously, if there's a header right, there's a header left. So that's what I'm gonna do. Header, um, no, uh, header underscore underscore left. And inside this div, what we will have is another a tag because uh, you saw that even the logo actually led to the home page. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, a tag, the href, obviously, is going to be to just forward slash because we wanted to go to the home page and we're going to give this a class name of header underscore underscore uh logo yeah logo and under this a tag what we will have is actually an image and the source of the image will be the same logo that we had uh in our index.css, index.html, sorry. Uh, yeah, there we go. So now we have that and the class name is going to be header underscore underscore icon. Yeah, that's fine. And below that, I'm gonna make in, uh, pop in an h3 and I'm gonna give this a class name and that's going to be the same class name here. That's header underscore underscore text. Save. And here we need to type in earth. Now we should, uh, I'll just refresh it once. Yeah, there we go. We have that. Now, obviously this does not look good. So we need to style it a bit for it to actually look good. Looks like an actual nav bar. So in header.css, I'm just gonna paste in a few styles. So if I just paste that in, uh, so as you can see, it is a lot of styling because it does have many animations and all that. So I'm just gonna save this. And if we go back here, yeah, that's what it is. Now, actually, if we put in that margin, margin top, it will be okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's how we want it to look. Now, let me just explain a few of the styles here. So the header, the actual containing div of all of this, is that overall style will be margin 35 pixels and that's all we need actually. And yeah, header right, which is actually this portion, it has that uh, hover effect too. So we'll just give it a margin top of 15 pixels, justify content right, because we want it to be the right of the website here and display flex and also line item center. Now we have our text, which is specifically uh, directing us to each one of these. So we have that margin right of 50 pixels, which is why they're actually spaced like this. And then text decoration none because if we were to just comment that out here, you can see we'll have that underline because it's an A tag. So we don't want that. So that's what text decoration does. Font size of 20 pixels, font size of 600, position relative. And we need this actually to make the animation work properly. So if I just comment this out here, you can see that, yeah, it doesn't work. So that's why we need position relative and the color of the text here, which is just RGB 81, 81, 81. Now header right and target these A tags. 
So uh, I'm gonna use the after selector here, the content set it to just an empty string. Position absolute is also talking about the animation. So this is actually directing us to that underline effect, which is the actual animation when we hover over. So yeah, that underline, we're styling all of that here. Now we have a transition 0 0.3 seconds ease in out. So this is actually the transition. And without this, as you can see, it would just be, just look at that. It's just that snappy sort of thing, which isn't very smooth. So that's why we have transition 0 0.3 seconds. And yeah, header right, a hover when we do that. It's talking about the specific A tag. So you can see the color does change, but very slightly. So that's what we want. And when we hover over it, the width of this um, underline will actually go to 100%. Now this text last, actually we don't need this here. Yeah, so just delete that. And header left. So finally we're starting this now. Justify content left because we want it to be on the left again. Display flex, align item center, margin top, minus 37 pixels. So I know that's very specific, but it's just because without that, you can see that it would just look messed up. So yeah, that's what happens. So I'm gonna bring that back in. That's what that does. The header icon, which is the actual image, has a width and height of 50 pixels and also the cursor is a pointer. Now the A tag has a bunch of styles over here. I'm not gonna go into all of those. And uh, header left, it has an H3, obviously, which is uh, this right here, header dot underscore underscore text. So this actually shares all the styles from this two. So yeah, that's what we have. And that's just a font size of 23 pixels. So with that, we're actually done with our header component. Now that was very easy and after this, we'll actually be styling uh, or actually making the components for each one of these. So, no, actually before that, we're gonna do this animation. So this is just another animation with a few more keyframes. It's actually pretty simple. So uh, for this, we actually need another component. So we're basically done with our header component. So I'm gonna create a new folder called main. And inside that, I'm gonna create main.js and main.css there we go and yeah again the same snippet that I use for the other component rfce there div main it's okay and now just import uh, the styles for styles file so uh, main.css yeah right there now uh, app.js here obviously we need to uh, invoke the main component here. So main, and again, the auto import just comes very much in handy. Yeah, so we can just use that. If we go back right here, it should pop up here. Let me just check. Yeah, now it's compiled. There we go, we have main here. So as you can see, it's a different font and that's because of the font family that we had actually imported in our app.css. So everything in our body will have the same font. And uh, there's actually a different font too. For example, this one, there's actually a monospace font. And then for these uh, cards, we have different font. So yeah, we'll have to implement all of that. But for the header and uh, all of these, it's actually the same font. So yeah, that's it for the header, like I said. And now we're gonna start developing the main component. And again, we're gonna start with the animation here. Really smooth typewriter sort of animation. Okay, so that's exactly what we're gonna do now. And actually here, I think you might notice that I have uh, decreased the space between this and the uh, actual end of the screen there. So uh, I did that by um, adding another class here. Uh, so this wildlife, uh, this particular navbar item it has two classes, that is header text and also header text last. So it's gonna have all the styles from header text and also some more from uh, header text last, which these two, these other two don't have. So here, as you can see the header text, we've styled it as normal and here header text last, I've just made its margin by zero because if I just comment that out, 
I feel like that space is a little too much. We don't need that. So yeah, that's what I've done here. And honestly, that looks better. So yeah, now we're gonna get started with the actual main component. So uh, first we'll do that animation there. So uh, if I just come back here and the first thing I'm gonna do is give this a class name of main. There we go. And I'm gonna create a center tag here because we want all this text actually to be centered. Uh, so inside of this, I'll create a div with the name of um, main underscore underscore wrapper. Inside of that, I'll create another div called main underscore underscore container. And inside of this, I'll create a p tag with the class name main underscore underscore animated text there. And now inside of this, I'll just type it's time to save wildlife. Uh, you just... There we go. Now this uh, wildlife, I'm just going to put that inside of a span because we want it to be a different color from the rest of the text. So it's going to be a little bit of a green color. Go outside a full stop there. There we go. I just save that. The first thing I'm going to do here is give the main container. Uh, a display of inline block. Inline block. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to actually style the uh, main animated text. There we go. Oh no. Yeah. So these are the actual styles. Just save that. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, but for now, uh, main animated text and the span inside it, which is actually uh, the text that we want in a different color. Span. Make that a color of hashtag 3eb489 there so that's want it to be yeah oh uh, yeah that looks good so we have this cursor here but it's not animated yet because yeah we actually want to animate it so for that uh, i'm gonna add in a keyframe selector here keyframes and we're gonna use the typing this one here and what we want to do is start it from width zero. Yeah. And now another keyframe. Uh, this is for cursor. Yeah. And from 50%, we're going to make its border color transparent. there save that come back here and as you can see that animation now works so now i'm going to explain a bit about these styles here so here the font size 5 rem font family monospace because i feel like uh, this type error sort of animation is paired very well with the monospace font the border height of five pixels which is actually this cursor here a width of 100%, white space, no wrap, overflow will be hidden. And this animation, which is actually the most important part for this, typing, and which this will last for four seconds, and the steps right here. So this is basically the amount of characters in this, including the space. So that's why it's a steps of 27. So whatever you are writing here, just type, uh, count the amount of characters in it. Include the spaces too, by the way. And yeah, here cursor, which is a separate one. Uh, this is for the cursor here. Uh, this will last for 0.4 seconds. Step end, uh, it's gonna be infinite and alternate. Yeah, so that's what we want. And now after this, we have our uh, cards about uh, specific animals. So yeah, we have all of this. So this is actually gonna be a separate component. So. Yeah, we'll just create uh, a new folder inside of this because we're only gonna use the cards component 
inside of this main folder, I mean main component and also the wildlife component. So actually, I yeah, we're gonna use it for both components. So I think I'll actually put it outside itself. So cards, cards.js, cards.css, there. Uh, now here, I'm gonna use our handy little snippet, RFCE. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I'm gonna import, import dot slash cards dot CSS. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, uh, I'll just keep that there for now and we'll see how this works. Now outside of the center tag, I'll create another div with the name of main underscore underscore content. And inside of this, another div with main underscore underscore uh, cards. Yeah, that's fine. Now, here we have, uh, here uh, we just go back. We have four cards here, so we'll have to repeat this cards component four, time, four times. Uh, I don't think the auto import does work here then. Okay, that's fine. We'll just import it manually. Import. card from dot dot slash I think yeah cards folder slash cards yeah it's fine now we will actually make four of these and if I save that and go back uh, okay let me see Oh yeah, that's a default export. We actually don't want that. Yeah, there we go. We have four of these now. So now we'll actually start uh, programming this. So the first thing we wanna do is these arguments here, uh, the lion peacock, how I made it separate is actually in React, we have this thing called props. So I'm just gonna destructure this and to take in props, actually here we'll have to type them in. So first thing we want is the name, whatever animal it is, that, and then a description about it. There, and also image. Actually it would work with IMG, that's fine. Okay, so now inside of this div, I'm gonna first give this a class name of card. And for now, I'm just gonna test this out. So here, name, description, and then the image. So here, uh, I'm just gonna pop in uh, whatever we need. So this, I'm just gonna delete it, and I'm gonna paste this in. So this is actually what we need for the card uh, component here. So the name for the first one is lion and this is the description. And then the image, it's actually an image from Pexels. So if I just click on that, one second. Yeah, there we go. This is the image. So I've just given the URL for that. And uh, yeah, I think that would work fine. And actually I don't wanna uh, render the image out like this. Uh, I'll create an image tag and the source I'm gonna give image no IMG yeah the alt I'm gonna make it we can use the name so yeah there we go save that if we go back yeah, uh, now this, it's not how we want it to be, but as you can see the uh, information here is getting pulled in, lion and then all of that, and then also the image. So yeah, this is okay. We will obviously need to uh, give this some styles and also this is not how we want it to be. So yeah, we'll just do that for now. Now in the main component, uh, all the information that we wanted to give in, we have actually passed that in. 
So now uh, what we just did, it was just to show that all the information is being pulled in and we have all that here. So now we actually need to use the information to actually make a very intuitive, good looking component here. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a div uh, with a class name of card, card, excuse me, card, underscore, underscore, image, wrapper. There we go. And we're gonna wrap the image inside of that div. Now below this, I'm gonna create another div. Yeah, that's what we want. Just delete that. Oops, okay. Div, there. Uh, now another div with uh, the class name of card underscore underscore main and h3 with the name and also a p tag with the description. Now, uh, actually, we don't want to use this here. We'll just use an a tag for now that and now this and RARR semicolon, it's actually for uh, the arrow right here. So yeah, this, this arrow, uh, we got that by using this. So yeah, that's just for the arrow. Now, uh, this does not look good. We'll have to obviously style it. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. We go to this cards.css. And actually this is not cards.css, it should be just card.css singular there we go i think the imports will be updated never mind okay we'll have to do that ourselves okay now this actually has a lot of styles so i'm just gonna paste it in and go through the styles one by one so we're just importing a font here uh the width 100 percent this is actually the image wrapper and we're targeting the actual image so width and height, I'm gonna set it to 100%. Border radius, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, zero, zero. So this is gonna make the top two corners uh, rounded by 10 pixels and the bottom two, we don't want it rounded so zero and zero and a display of block. And then the actual card is gonna be a background color of this slightly off white sort of color with a border radius of 10 pixels again. And we give it a little bit of a box shadow, which I think it actually looks better than usual. A cursor of pointer and a transition of 0 0.2 ease in. Now this transition is actually for here we see. Uh, it goes a little bigger, so that's what the transition's for. And we just make it uh, transform on a scale of 1.06. That's actually a very small amount, but that's all we need. Now this card image wrapper, we're gonna make the position relative. Card main, padding 20 pixels and 10 pixels. And the font family, this is actually the one I imported here. Uh, so I'm gonna make it that. And actually we save this and go back here. Still won't be how we want it to. Yeah, it'll be like that. We have to do a little bit of styling in the main component too. Uh, so yeah, card main, the P tag, the color font size, line height is actually the height of like, it actually controls the spacing and all that between the lines. So if we make this bigger, it's just, you know, going to be spaced out a little bit more. Uh, now we have the font weight of 400, uh, margin bottom of 20 pixels. That's all fine. Now the card button, which is actually, uh, where is that? Yeah, this one, the a tag. What we'll do here is make it a text decoration of none because for A tags, whenever uh, you know you make an A tag without any styling, it'll be blue in color and there'll actually be an underline, so we don't want that. So we're gonna make text decoration none, padding 10 pixels, give it a border radius, background color of this blue color, color of white smoke, and transition 0 0.3 ease in out. And the transition is we're just gonna make the background color a tad bit lighter, so. Yeah, that's what we're doing there. Now the span, which is right here, this arrow, this also has an animation. It'll move slightly to the right. So that's why we have a margin left of 10 pixels. Yeah, so that's basically all for this. Now, yeah, like I said, in our main component, we'll actually have to do a bit of styling too. So, uh, not main.js, sorry, main.css. Uh, I were to go back, where is that, yeah, here. What we're actually going to target is this main cards uh, div here. So, yeah, there we go. 
give it a display of grid, grid template columns, repeat, auto fit, and min max is going to be 400 pixels and 1 FR. Padding of 20 pixels and a grid gap, which is going to be the space between each of the elements inside of the grid. I'm going to make that 40 pixels and a margin top of 2%. So yeah, that'll be fine now. Uh, yeah, there it is. So it just magically pops into place here. So uh, if I were to hover over these buttons, as you can see, they do work. Yeah, the transition does work, but when we click on it, it does uh, route us to the page, but actually we don't have a page like that yet. We'll obviously have to like code it in. So yeah, it doesn't work yet. So that's, uh, we won't do that now actually. The next thing we'll focus on is the contribute component. So after doing that, uh, yeah, we'll do the wildlife component too, and then we'll focus on uh, actually making the information sort of pages there. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. So for now, let's do exactly that. So um, the contribute component here, if we go back, switch to the contribute tab, it's gonna look somewhat like this. And the first thing that we can notice here is this header. So this is basically an H2 that uh, in the same way that we made um, this one in the green color by just wrapping it in a span tag, we're gonna do the same thing here, but just that there won't be an animation here. So uh, first of all, like always, inside the components tab, components folder, we will create another folder, uh, and this time it's gonna be named contribute, like so, and create a file, contribute.js, and also, contribute.css oops not like that yeah contribute.css okay now in contribute.js we'll use our snippets again rfce and just give it a moment there we go let's do that and for now that's fine import dot slash contribute.css contribute.css yeah it's fine okay and now what we're gonna do is in uh, the our header actually here uh, where is that no actually in app.js oh yeah we didn't start using react router yet yeah we need to start using react router so for that, uh, I'm gonna create a new terminal here. And cd into our directory, clear that. And I'm just gonna go to the React Router page. React, oh, React, yeah, right there. There it is. Give that a moment and yeah, click on I'm new here. Okay. Now go to the setup. Now uh, we don't need all of this. We just need our, uh, yeah, we don't need all of this. We just need npm install react router dom. That's what we need. And yeah, I'm just gonna paste that in here. Now we need to give this a moment to actually download. Okay, now uh, that's downloaded there. And the first thing we need to do is go to our index.js index here, index.js. And uh, here you can see this React strict mode and inside that we have our app. So here we're gonna add another tag with the name of browser router. So this is actually a tag in React router which will wrap the entire application in order for us to use uh, the actual functionality of React Router. Oh, oops. Yeah, paste that there. And uh, there, we just save that. Okay. If we go to our actual app component, app.js, yeah. So this, we're actually gonna change this a bit. So if I just paste this in, oops, not that one. If I just paste, this in this yeah so this is basically how we want our app component to look 
So uh, for now, actually, the contribute yeah, this is fine. Uh, just uh, yeah, import that. But then we're gonna comment both of these means all for import, so it's okay. Now, here you can see the header component, and the reason why we're actually not uh, giving that as another route here is because we want this to be displayed in every single page. So uh, if we were to give that in a route, uh, we'd have to manually give a um, render header in each one of these components. So in contribute and main, in each one of them, we'd actually have to separately uh, render our header component. So we don't want to go through all that. So we're just gonna give header over here, then the HR, which we already had, and then our routes here. So if I save this here and go back, Uh, just a second. Yeah, we'll get this error. We haven't imported it yet. Yeah, so the routes import from React Router DOM, and even route import that too from React Router DOM. Now again, the shortcut for that is Control Space. So basically, that that's what you need to do if you want to import it like that. Anyway, so uh, we have that down. Now if we go back. This should be working and we go to contribute yeah nice it is working oh actually so uh, we you see that refresh here uh when we route through the pages now in react router that actually shouldn't be a thing so what we haven't done is that uh in our um header component here we haven't changed the a tags to link tags so we need to change all of them to link tags for them to actually be working like how we want them to be working. So then uh, everything except the wildlife component, which we actually haven't added as a route, we're gonna make all of that a link tag. So both of these are gonna be link tags and now uh, this didn't work properly anyway. Yeah, we'll just do that manually. So we also need to import this obviously. So there we go, we have better DOM, just like that. So now just save that and if I were to go back here now, now if I switch to the contribute contribute uh, tab here, actually, uh, not href. This also, we need to change that to two, okay? So that's what uh, the props for the link component are, not href. And now that should be working. Didn't compile yet. It did. Okay, wait, just refresh that then. Okay. And now, as you can see, that does work without the refresh too. So it's really smooth here. No refresh at all. So that's nice. And now uh, we will actually make our contribute component. So the first thing here, give the div a class name, like always, class name of contribute contribute okay and now uh, here I'm gonna make uh, a center tag so yeah center there we go just like that and inside of this we're gonna make an h2 like that and in this h2 we'll again give the text it's Time to save. Uh, okay, yeah. Time to save, and then in the spam tag, just like we did for the one before, not the fragment tag. Yeah, spam wildlife. Okay, there we go. That's what we want, and now after this. I'm gonna create a div with the class name of contribute, contribute underscore underscore wrapper. Inside of this, I'll give an image just like that. So this is an image uh, of the tiger that you saw there on the finished application. So yeah, this is the image. So uh, right now we'll just go back to this. And uh, now, actually, there is a lot of information here. 
So I'm just gonna paste that in. So yeah, just paste just like that. Now, uh, I'll actually just save this and I'll explain it later. Just give it a second. Oops, I did not mean to do that, okay. So then, uh, oh, I think I gave an extra. Yeah, I did, okay. Yeah, there we go. Now if we go back to this. Yeah, there we go. There's a lot of this. So then basically what this is, is uh, all of these are the same. So I'll just go on this, the first one here. So the first thing we can see is the contribute info wrapper. So this is just the wrapper for all the text here, this information. So inside of that, we have the actual contribute info. Now inside of this, we have an h1 tag, which is this, the heading for each one of them. So the first one, save habitat, then give water, then also be sorting to eco-friendly products. So uh, in the h1, we'll make the save habitat. Then we'll make a line break, so br, just like so. And this here, the first line of text, then break the line again, and so on, just like that. So all of them have the same thing, the same overall principle there. Okay, now in the contribute.css, this also does have uh, like a bunch of styles, so. So now we're gonna create our wildlife component. So for actually creating our wildlife component, we will need to create a new folder called wildlife. And inside of that, we'll create wildlife.js and also wildlife.css like that okay so here we're just gonna type in rfce there we go and yeah that's what it gives us now we're gonna save this come here to app.js and uh uncomment this here and also uncomment that so that's the import for our actual wildlife component now that should be working here, so uh, yeah, there it is. Now if we go to our wildlife, the, if we click that on the header, yeah, there we go. But then as you can see, there was a refresh, so that is because we haven't actually uh, changed this a tag to a link link and instead of href we're going to make that to link to slash wildlife there it is and uh now there should yeah there is no refresh there we go now in our wildlife component here first of all we're going to give this a class name of wildlife wild life and then we will import dot slash wildlife dot css now inside of here we're gonna paste in the following code so basically this again uses the card component which we're just going to quickly import here uh yeah there it is that one so uh this uh what we have here is first a div with the class name of cards top and also wildlife cards and we have the same stuff that we have in our actual main component. So this is just the exact same stuff with no changes. Then we have another div with wildlife cards bottom and also wildlife cards again, inside of which we have a little different uh, card. So the first one, for example, is a fox and the, the description for that. And then we also have the image of a fox and so on for a raccoon, a bear, and also a wolf. Now, obviously, we need some stylings for this because if I were to come here, yeah, this is how it looks right now. Definitely not what we want. So the styling here, this is going to be the styling. So display of grid, bear targeting the wildlife cards, which is a class name that we gave to both our wildlife cards bottom and also wildlife cards top. Yeah. So yeah, display of grid, grid template columns, repeat auto fit, a min max of 400 pixels and one FR, a padding of 20 pixels and also a grid gap of 40 pixels. Now this grid gap, for instance, actually uh, says 
how much spacing there should be between each element of the grid. Now if I save this and go back here, uh, okay, wait, just, yeah, we did import it. Uh, yeah, there we go, it just took a second to refresh. Uh, so now we have that looking exactly like we wanted to. So basically that's it for our wildlife component. So very simple here, just like our main component, just with four more of these cards. So now we're gonna be developing the actual information display component. So right over here, what we can do first is obviously like always create another folder. So which will be called information display. And inside of this, again, information display dot js and also information display dot css there we go okay so uh now we're gonna use our little snippet so rfce and right here there we go okay so first we're gonna see if this actually does render here so oh uh, yeah that's fine we'll just import this first uh import dot slash information display dot css there we go okay so now uh what we need to do is go over to app dot js there we go uncomment this actually there we go and just yeah import that okay now uh, we need to change one more thing actually so in our cards component should be yeah there we go uh yeah right here so this a tag we're going to change this into a link there it is so uh yeah there we go link tag save that and now that should be working so i hope that is compiled no actually we need to give it a second and there we go, but uh, there's actually an error. Uh, okay, we didn't actually import this. Okay, so yeah, import link. That should be fine now. And yeah, there we go, compile successfully. Read more. And uh, okay, just, oh yeah, not href actually, two. Okay, yeah, now that should be working. Yeah, there we go. Information display, that's all good. Okay, so now in our actual information display, uh, before uh, this return actually, uh, let's just, yeah, here, I'm gonna paste in some code. So uh, it will be this actually right there. Yeah, so, uh, Firstly, let's just see here, I'm gonna explain this, so, okay. First of all, we have our name. All of these are use states, which are like basically variables in normal JavaScript, but we use use state in uh, React.js. So yeah, that's what that is. And then we also have our use effect, which I'm going to explain in some time. So, First of all, uh, we have our name use if, I mean use state. So this is just a variable sort of thing. So to make uh, this variable, we need to type const and then the square bracket inside of which we'll do name comma set name. So this name is actually going to like pull our variable wherever we want to use it. And then we have our set name, which will be used to modify the variable. So yeah, that's what it is. Now we'll type use state, and this will actually be the default value for our state, com yeah, variable, sorry. Uh, so window.location.hash, this is basically just uh, whatever comes after the hashtag, so yeah, right here. So this will be hashtag lion right now, so I'll just show you that in a moment. And then we have our image, which is, uh, we, we were to go here. Yeah, this thing. And then there's description, which is this. Yeah. So um, after that, we have our use effect. And if I were to just scroll down here, you'll see here inside of square bracket, we have name. 
So basically what this says is that this use effect will run every time we have a change in our name variable. So uh, here we have a, a, a statement, if statement. Uh, so if our name is equal to lion, hashtag lion, because uh, this window allocation dot hash actually includes a hashtag. Then if that is the case, we'll set our image to this, which is an image of a lion and the description to this, which is just a short description of a lion. Yeah, there we go. This is a small paragraph about it. And then we have else if it's a peacock, this is the image, description again, and so on. Just keeps going like that. So all you have to do is just get an image of, for example, here, you need an image of a fox and put that in here. And the description here, you will need to give a short description about it. I'd recommend at least like a paragraph because in a page as big as this, you know, if you give lesser than this, uh, it'll look kind of empty. You can even give it like bigger than this. I think that'll actually look better because, you know, you need a longer paragraph. Yeah, you could actually give two or three paragraphs if you will. So, yeah. Uh, and then there's a coon set image again here, description, all of that, and then bear and else. So this is going to be the last one here. So this is for our wolf. So yeah, that's what it is. So if the name is not any of these that we have mentioned, the only thing it can be other than that is actually a wolf, if you have programmed it properly, that is. And if that is the case, set image to a, uh, an image of a wolf, and then also a description about a wolf. So that's what all of this says. Now here, what I'm gonna do is just render out our name. There we go. If I go back here, now, uh, did I just compile? Yeah, it did compile. Yeah, there we go, we have hashtag lion. So right now I had clicked on lion, so yeah, there we have hashtag lion. Here we have hashtag peacock and in our wildlife component here. If we were to, um, oh, what happened here? Uh, okay. Okay, so the actual problem is here. Uh, it's not with life, it's wildlife. So, uh, yeah, that's the problem there. Okay, so easy fix here. Um, pretty sure in our header, yeah, header. Yeah, just correct that typo. This is a typo, simpler. Okay, now uh, here, if I were to go to wolf, it would be wolf, yeah. So that's what we want. Uh, now, we need to, uh, so if you can see here, how we display the name is without the hash. So that too is a very simple fix. So if I were to come back to my information display, we have all of this, I think we can just yeah, shrink the use effect. Yeah, that's way better. So, for me to actually remove that hashtag there, uh, we would just need to use a uh, name, not, oh God, name dot replace, replace. And then in a string, we're gonna give the hash with an empty string which will just replace it, nothing, no text, basically. Now, if I try to click this again, yeah, there we go, it's gone. So actually, we don't need this here yet. So there we go. I'm gonna give this a class name of information display, like so. Oh, oops. Yeah, information display. Inside of this, what we will do is create information, uh, information display, underscore, underscore, content top, like so. Inside here, we will create an image 
with the following attributes. So for now, let's just remove this and paste this in. So the source will be this image that we have got from our use effect here. So set image, we've set the image. So that'll be the image and the thumbnail, uh, the alt will be the, th uh, the text thumbnail. The class name will be information display underscore underscore thumbnail, like so, yeah, it's okay. Now here we will create information display underscore underscore content. Content. Yeah, so inside of this, you can create an each one uh, with the class name of information. Uh, oh no. Now, this is basically the code here. Uh, so we have our information display content top inside of which we have the image. Uh, then we have our information display content inside of which we have our title hr the p tag and yeah that's it here now if we save this and go back read more yeah like that now uh the styling obviously we'll have to change it so here uh in information display.css there we go paste that so first of all we're gonna import a font there it is there it is. So then this will be from Google Fonts actually. Then in our information display, the actual uh, global div sort of thing. Yeah, this component here. Uh, we will do a, have a padding of 20 pixels and change the font family to the one that I've just imported here. Now the thumbnail, which is the actual image, we'll do an object width of cover so that it maintains the op, uh, aspect ratio and a width of 50%. And also we'll give it a slightly rounded border, so border radius of 10 pixels. Now the actual content, margin left of 20 pixels, is actually to give it some space between the uh, image and the actual content. Then our title, which is our, uh, this thing here, H1. Uh, we'll just give it a margin top of 30 pixels. And our content top, display of flex. In our summary, we're gonna give it a margin top of seven pixels, a color of this like gray sort of color, font size of 23 pixels, font weight of 400, and also a margin bottom of 20 pixels. Now uh, this, we don't actually need this. There we go. The HR, we're gonna give it the following margin. Okay. Uh, header, what is this here? Oh wait, this is still, okay, we need to make this a link actually, link to my life. Why did we import contribute here? Okay, we don't need that. Uh, image, where's the image? Okay, alt, logo. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's all fine. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, now with that, our website is actually pretty much done. So, final showcase here actually. So, full screen it. Okay, we have all of this, the hover effects, our little animation. So if I were to just reload this, we can see that again. There we go, typewriters, hover effects, for example, if we go to Peacock, this will be there. Little description, back to home. Now we have our contribute, also the hover effects in the header, all of that. This is what we have here. Save habitat, give water, resorting to eco-friendly products, all of that. Our wildlife component, which is actually the main component here. We have more of these animals. So for example, bear, we have this. And yeah, also if we click this too, we'll be back to our home component. Oh wait, so that is not a link tag yet because as you can see now, if I go to contribute for example, and click this, there's a refresh. 
So again, simple fix, change this to a link and to the home page. Yeah. Okay. Now there should be no refresh and there we go. Now that's it for our website actually. So if you want to deploy your application, you can actually check out my previous videos where I actually show you how you can deploy the application. So for now, this is pretty much it for our application. Until next time, goodbye.